welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society and Anne Boleyn Files. Now, today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 20th of March, 1544, Cuthbert Main, or Saint Cuthbert Main, Roman Catholic priest and martyr, was baptised on the Feast of St Cuthbert in Yulston in North Devon. Cuthbert Main has gone down in history as the first seminary priest to be martyred. He was hanged, drawn and quartered at Launston on the 30th of November 1577 in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Let me tell you a bit more about Cuthbert. Cuthbert Main was born in 1544 and was the son of farmer William Main. Cuthbert was educated at Barnstable Grammar School. His father's boss, Sir John Chichester, acted as his patron. And in 1561, when Cuthbert was just 17, Chichester got him installed as rector of Hutshaw in Devon. In 1565, he went to St Alban Hall, Oxford. And in 1566, he graduated BA. He then became a chaplain at St John's College and obtained his MA in 1570. During his time at St John's, Gregory Martin, Edmund Campion and others warned him of the evil state he stood in and encouraged him to convert to the Roman Catholic faith and to travel to Dwy. One of their letters to Cuthbert was seen by the Bishop of London, who sent men to Oxford in search of Cuthbert, but he'd managed to flee to Dwy already, and there was admitted to the English College, the Jesuit Seminary College. He was ordained as a priest there in 1575 and obtained his Bachelor in Theology in 1576. Cuthbert returned to England in 1576 and became chaplain and steward to Francis Tregean, a recusant gentleman of Golden Manor near Probus in Cornwall. He celebrated mass at several of Tregean's family estates in Cornwall, but in June 1577, after the Bishop of Exeter and Sheriff of Cornwall had decided to crack down on Catholics in Cornwall, Golden Manor was surrounded by a number of justices of the peace and a hundred armed men. They were intent on searching the property on the pretext that they had heard that a Mr Bourne, who'd committed a crime in London, had fled to Cornwall and was holed up in the house. After being threatened by the sheriff with a dagger, Tregean allowed the men into his house and they went straight to Cuthbert's room. Cuthbert, who was wearing a prohibited wax Agnes Day at the time, was arrested and his papers seized and sent to the bishop. By the way, a wax Agnes Day was a wax disc usually made from the previous year's Easter candles and imprinted with a lamb, the Lamb of God, on one side and figures of saints on the other. Cuthbert was paraded through several Cornish villages on the way to his prison at Launston Castle, where he was imprisoned for three months before he was tried at the Michaelmas Assizes. The charges laid against him included him traitorously getting hold of a papal bull and publishing it at Golden Manor, defending the authority of the Pope, purchasing a number of Agnes Day and giving them to people, and celebrating the Catholic Mass. Cuthbert was found guilty of treason and sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, while his master, Francis Tregean, had his property seized and was sentenced to life imprisonment. In his book, Memoirs of Missionary Priests, Bishop Richard Challoner notes that there were no sufficient proofs of any of these heads of the indictments and that the bull was simply a printed copy of the grant of the Jubilee of the past year and had not been procured by Cuthbert. On the 29th of November 1577, Cuthbert was allegedly offered mercy if he'd renounced his Catholic faith, which he refused to do. He also refused to name any other Catholic recusants. He was also asked to swear on the Bible that Queen Elizabeth I was the supreme head of the church in England. Upon this, he took the Bible into his hands, made the sign of the cross upon it, kissed it and said, the Queen neither ever was, nor is, nor ever shall be, the head of the Church of England. 
On the 30th of November 1577, Cuthbert was drawn on a hurdle to the marketplace of Launceston for his execution. Bishop Chaloner drew on an account published in 1582 and a Latin manuscript from Dwy in his account of Cuthbert's life and execution. Here is the account of his execution. When he came to the place of execution, which was the marketplace of the town, where they had on purpose erected a gibbet of unusual height, being taken off the sledge, he kneeled down and prayed. When he was on the ladder and the rope about his neck, he would have spoken to the people, but the justices would not suffer him, but bid him say his prayers, which he did very devoutly. And as the hangman was about to turn the ladder, one of the justices spoke to him in this manner. Now, villain and traitor, thou knowest that thou shalt die, and therefore tell us whether Mr. Tregean and Sir John Arundel did know of these things which thou art condemned for, and also what thou dost know by them. Mr. Maine answered him very mildly, I know nothing of Mr. Tregean and Sir John Arundel, but that they are good and godly gentlemen. And as for the things I'm condemned for, they were only known to me and to no other. Then he was cast off the ladder, saying, In manus tuus, etc., and knocking his breast. Some of the gentlemen would have had him cut down straight away, that they might have had him quartered alive. But the sheriff's deputy would not, but let him hang till he was dead. The Latin manuscript says, He was indeed cut down alive, but falling from the beam, which was of an unusual height, with his head upon the side of the scaffold, on which he was to be quartered, he was by that means almost quite killed, and therefore but little sensible of the ensuing butchery. His quarters were disposed of, one to Bodwin, one to Tregney, one to Barnstable, and the fourth to remain at Launston Castle. His head was set upon a pole at Wadebridge, a noted highway. The hangman who imbrued his hands to his innocent blood in less than a month's time became mad and soon after miserably expired. And it is particularly remarked that not one of those whom Mr. Maine reconciled to the church could ever be induced to renounce the Catholic truth which they'd learned from so good a master. Now Cuthbert was canonised on the 15th of October 1970 by Pope Paul VI as one of the 40 martyrs of England and Wales. St Cuthbert Main's feast day is celebrated on the 30th of November. Thank you for joining me. You'll find a link to last year's On This Day in Tudor History in the description, so do check that out as well. You can subscribe to the channel with that subscribe button just there. Do click it. And you can give me a like and leave a comment. And you can, of course, hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. Thank you for joining me and for joining Madge, who is just next to me. I'll get Tim to pan to her. She, uh, she likes to supervise and just make sure that I am being accurate. And we'll see you tomorrow for another On This Day in Tudor History event. I can't promise whether it will be good or bad. Probably bad. Mm -hmm.